All right, YouTube. DJ Fedora here with another edition of Let's Talk. Today, let's talk about meat glue. Yes, I said meat glue. Now, when you go to the store and you buy a steak and you bring it home and you slap it on the grill and you smell that wonderful aroma of USDA choice beef just sizzling away on the grill and you can't wait to slice into it and put that wonderfully juicy steak into your mouth and enjoy the flavor and the aroma all mixing together as you chew away and have a wonderful steak dinner. But did you know that when you go to the butcher or to the store and buy that steak, you may not be buying the steak you think you're buying? Yes, folks, I've done a little research and came across an amazing scandal out there that hardly any Americans know about. But it's out there, and it happens daily at butchers and stores and any place out there that sells meat. It's called meat glue. And to be exact, it's called transglutamate. It's an enzyme that catalyzes the formation of isopeptid bond between free amino groups and the axial group at the end of the side chain of protein or peptid bound glutamine. In other words, it glues meat together. And it does it so well that you can barely even tell that it is glued together. It's a very, very cool little process that the butchers use to basically add value to the meat that they're making. <laughs> they're literally making by gluing together smaller scraps into a larger chunk. And it's not just used to make fake, fake steak out there. Uh, the American Meat Institute estimate that it's used in about 8 million pounds of meat every year in the United States. Transglutamase can be used to cross-link pieces of any type of meat, folks. That's fish, chicken, pork, you name it. Bison, emu, snake. If it's meat, it can be glued together with this transglutamase. Now, it's used to produce larger chunks of meat, obviously. But skilled butchers can actually use it to make a very real-looking steak. Check it out. That's pretty convincing. The one on the left is a real steak. The one on the right is a glued together steak using this meat glue or transglutamase. Even professional butchers can barely tell that this stuff is actually being used when it's used. Now here's a really scary issue here. The bonds formed by these transglutamase exhibit high resistance to proteolytic degradation, proteolysis. In other words, decomposition or breaking down of the meat. So it's virtually impossible even within the age of the beef to see that it's been glued together. So you could have older chunks of meat with newer chunks of meat glued together and not be able to tell the difference between the two because it keeps it from those joints from actually breaking down very easy. Now here's the other very scary and unsettling reality. The majority of this enzyme comes from the blood of pigs and cattle. So if you think that your diet doesn't consist of pork or beef for religious beliefs or dietary concerns, think again. Because you could be eating fish that's glued together with pig 
or cattle blood. You could be eating chicken that's been glued together with pig and cattle blood. Now obviously you get a chicken breast, that's kind of hard to glue together and make it look like a chicken breast. But think of all the different things like the chicken that's wrapped in bacon and looks it's, it's a medallion, um, other things like stuffed chicken, the chicken that you buy that's already pre-done into like chicken cordon blues and things of that nature. Fish, same way. Fish is already cut, sliced, sashimis, things of that nature. Um, uh, you can easily see this being used in a lot of um, sushi joints to combine their fish together to make larger usable chunks that they then cut and put on sushi. Um, it's also used to make uh, very popular foods like fish balls in uh, Asian cuisine. And also, uh, imitation crab meat is full of transglutamates. I did not know this, and now I am never touching imitation crab meat again. I knew it was made from surami, a fish, and it's not obviously it's not crab meat. And it's it's a fish is you a fish meat is used to make an imitation crab meat with the flavor and some imitation some imitation flavors and some natural flavors of crab, but the majority of it is all fish. And so that's why it's so much less expensive than real crab meat. However, now that I know that this stuff is full of this transglutamase, never going to touch it again. And here's why. Consequently, dysregulation of proteolysis can cause diseases and is used in some venoms from animals to damage their prey. Check this out. Proteolysis is important as an analytical tool for studying proteins in the laboratory as well as industrially, for example, in stain removal. Yes, these enzymes that they're using to glue this meat together are the same exact enzymes that remove stains from your carpet. So the stuff that you spray on your carpet to get those stains out is the same stuff that they're using to glue together your meat and butchers. These butchers are poisoning us. So the FDA is perfectly fine with this, by the way. Over in Europe, this stuff has been banned. It's not allowed to be used. But the FDA here in America says it's safe and it's perfectly okay to use. Because I'm sure somebody out there in the butcher industry lined some pockets in the FDA so that they would say, oh, it's okay. But here's the sad reality of this. Anti-transglutamase antibodies. That's antibodies that your body forms after this chemical has been introduced to you are found in celiac disease and may play a role in small bowel damage in response to dietary gliadin that characterizes this condition. In a related condition, dermatitis herpetiformis, in which small bowel changes are often found in which response to dietary exclusion of gliadin containing wheat products Epidermal transglutamase is the predominant autoantigen, the stuff that makes the skin. But these are anti-antiglutamase antibodies. In other words, the body is actually going after this stuff. It's, it's poisoning the body, so the body's going after it. Recent research indicates that sufferers from neurological diseases like Huntington's and Parkinson's may have unusually high levels of these types of transglutamase. It's hypothesized that these transglutamase may be involved in the formation of the protein that aggregates and causes Huntington's disease. Although it's not required, it can definitely cause it. Now, another really big scare about this, you think about it, how many people suffer from foodborne illnesses every year in the restaurant industry and also just in home cooking because of poor food handling. Bacterial microbes on meat, the, the outside of meat, it's already very high once you when you get it from the butcher. They're especially high if there's cross-contamination due to things. On a regular cut of meat is bad enough, but when you take chunks of meat that have larger external surfaces, and you glue those together, now you've got meat that not only has bacteria all on the outside, but now it's all through the inside.
Take a look at some of these cuts up here and look at them very closely. You cannot tell that these are glued together pieces of meat, but they are. You can easily see some of them point out the different joints where the meat was glued together. But a lot of them, you can hardly tell that and if, you're not, if it's not pointed out. And like I said before, professional butchers cannot tell that this stuff has happened. So if the bacterial microbes on a regular piece of meat are already high enough, you go and you add all those extra microbes throughout the meat because it's been glued together and if you don't cook that meat beyond the required temperature to kill the bacteria you're gonna get very 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 violently ill and it can kill people very easy especially children and elderly people that have compromised immune immune systems and then any other person out there that may have a compromised immune system due to an illness or a uh, previously disposed uh, situation. When I first saw this, I was speechless. I could not believe. I mean, I knew that our butcher industry probably lied about a lot of the cuts of meats that they put out there. And unless you were an actual person that's been educated on meat, you, you, you take their word for it that this is what you're buying. You're buying a filet mignon. You're buying a strip steak. You're buying a ribeye. But this ribeye right here, you can't tell that this is glued together. The one on the left is real. The one on the right is glued together. Folks, this is a horrible reality in today's age. We are living in a world of lies and deception. And it's up to us as individuals to keep our lives in check and make sure that we're not being taken advantage of. But when we add together things like the lies that our government tells us, the lies that our leaders tell us, the lies that our friends and family tell us, it starts to become harder and harder and harder to dig through those lies and to sort them out and determine the truth in all of it, which is why you got to surround yourself with the right people. Here is the last and final scary thing about this transglutamase. The butchers who utilize it, they wear masks. They wear gloves. Because when you breathe that stuff in or you get it on your skin, it's very harmful for you. So if the butchers who use it to glue their meat together wear gloves and masks when they're just using it, how much worse can it be for you when you take it into your body? So folks, when you go to the butcher or you go to the store to buy your meat, the first question you need to ask to any of them is do you use a transglutamase in any form and at any point? And if they look at you and kind of go, um, no... Chances are they probably are. I highly doubt they'll answer yes because the FDA doesn't require them to tell you that it's in the meat. And that's, again, falling back onto the deception that our government provides us every single day. But that's another story and another episode of Let's Talk About. So guys, just remember when you go to the store tomorrow or tonight, and you're buying that juicy, wonderful ribeye steak that you're going to bring home and slap on the grill, think again, you may not be getting that cut of meat. So what does this tell you? Is it safe to go to your butcher and buy meat? Is it safe to go to your store and buy meat? Probably so. But you still need to ask because you as a consumer, you need to be educated that this stuff is happening out there and it's being done right under your nose. And you have no clue because the FDA, our wonderful government, does not require them to tell you that they're gluing that meat together with these dangerous enzymes. So ask, keep yourself informed, keep yourself educated. And together, one day, maybe we'll have the upper hand. And I just want to remind you guys that we aren't anonymous but we are everywhere. And 
please keep your eye open for another episode of Let's Talk About. Also, I promise you, we've got another episode of Haunted Texas coming out soon. It's going to be here quickly. I've started filming it, um, and I'm doing a lot of research for the voiceover work and uh, narration, so um, it's going to be a good one. And I'm hoping that we can actually catch some activity on camera. Also, keep your eyes open for another uh, episode of Aliens in the Home. Uh, we're going to do a part two pretty soon. That's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, please subscribe to the channel. I've only got a, a small amount of subscribers right now, and I want to see that start to grow exponentially. Share these videos on YouTube, on uh, Facebook if you like them. Uh, like the videos down below. Add some comments, please. Tell your friends about the channel. Let me know what you want to hear about, if there's a topic. Uh, together, we're going to make this channel informative. And I want to say thank you to the guy um, who so rudely pointed out in my Star Wars uh, Snoke episode that uh, I needed to blow my nose. Some people don't have the luxury of breathing perfectly through their nasal passages. And so um, I do keep that in mind, though, and I appreciate you pointing out that uh, that was an annoying part of the video. Uh, so, <laughs> like I said to everybody, you know, keep your eyes open. We're going to have a lot of cool stuff happening, a lot of fun stuff. And until we see you then, we bid thee farewell. Good night.